Hi, welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, I'm going to cover anti-malarian hormone blood test, which I'll refer to as AMH. In this video, we're going to go over why it's requested and what the result means. But before I start the video, please can I request that if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel for new weekly medical education content. So let's start off the video with why AMH is requested. Well, AMH is sometimes requested in women about to undergo assisted contraception procedures, for example, in vitro fertilization, more commonly known as IVF. The results of this test can be used to guide the treatment used. It can also be requested as part of investigations into abnormal sexual development. Levels of AMH are much higher in baby boys than baby girls. Therefore, in babies born with ambiguous genitalia, i.e. if it's unclear if the babies are male or female, then AMH may be measured to help decide the gender of the infant. AMH can also be measured in male infants who've got undescended testicles to determine whether the functional testicles are present. Finally, some types of ovarian tumours produce anti-malarian hormone, and so its measurement can be used to monitor the effect of treatment and to identify tumour recurrence. So if you've had AMH or anti-malarian hormone taken, well, what does the result mean? Well, the interpretation of the result will vary depending on why it was requested. So firstly, if it was requested as part of an IVF or assisted contraception procedure, then a low blood AMH concentration might suggest that a woman may respond less well to ovarian stimulation and an alternative protocol might be followed. Similarly, a high blood AMH concentration might suggest that the woman may have excessive response to ovarian stimulation, and again, an alternative protocol might be followed. Secondly, if the AMH was requested as part of an investigation into abnormal sexual development, then it's important to note that high levels of AMH are much higher, as I've already mentioned, in baby boys than baby girls. And so in an infant with genitals that aren't clearly male or female, which is known as ambiguous genitalia, the blood AMH concentration can be compared to expected concentrations to help determine the sex of the child. I also mentioned that AMH can be produced by some tumours and some specific ovarian cancers might produce anti-malarian hormone. And again, the concentration of AMH in the blood may then be used to help monitor response to treatment and to look for recurrence. However, it's important to note that anti-malarian hormone is not detectable in all ovarian cancers. I hope the video was a helpful and informative oversight as to what AMH is and what it's used for. If you found it useful, please leave a like and also leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you've got any questions, I do try to reply to all comments where possible. However, this is an education platform and I can't give individual medical advice. I've also included useful extra reading links in the description box of this video, so please check those out if you've got time. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.